I'm Shannon Conway. I've been in the hospitality industry for about 18 years. I started as a server at a place called Big T's Grill in high school. Uh, and then went on to another family-owned restaurant in high school, kept working in restaurants to support myself through school, and then realized that restaurants were actually the path I wanted to take. Uh, worked my way up from server to bartender to manager, and eventually to director of operations within the same group. Um, I had been with r &L Hospitality Group for 12 years um, and ended there as a director of operations for the restaurants, lunch and supper, brunch, the grill, city diner, the village, uh, and our catering operation, the Urban Roost uh, Catering and Events. Um, and through that, I learned that there are many, many different ways to interact with this particular industry, um, all of which are very fun and interesting. Um, and I found that I, after having been in restaurants for going on, you know, 20 years, um, was looking to do something new and expand my experience with hospitality beyond just restaurants and catering, um, and had the opportunity to engage with Hatch companies, uh, the most familiar of which is Hatch Kitchen RVA, which is our commissary commercial kitchen. Um, it's first and foremost a food and beverage business incubator. Let me say that again. Hatch Kitchen is a food and beverage business incubator. Uh, we give chefs and food companies a place to prep, to do research and development, to mass produce their products for consumers, and we also give them business support, mentorship opportunities, um, and with our upcoming project, The Hatch Local, uh, which is a food hall that's opening in May of 2021. We're trying to create new avenues for expansion for all of these companies. Um, so whether or not they go on to be their own independent um, food company, whether they go on to open a food truck, open a brick and mortar, take a stop at Hatch Local and be a vendor with us for a year, we're trying to create as many outcomes for our people at Hatch as we possibly can. <laughs> uh, right now, my day is incredibly varied. Um, I'm used to things coming at me from all directions, just generally in the food industry. But um, at Hatch, you know, I start off my day reading emails right now. A lot of the uh, questions and um, traffic that I'm handling concern our project Hatch Local, um, which again is a few holidays opening next year. So I'm taking a lot of vendor inquiries from um, perspective people who will be or who want to be in the food hall. Uh, we're giving preference to our members, so there's a lot of that. Uh, still, I've been here for about six weeks. I'm getting to know a lot of the members. We have about 72 members here, um, and they all have a very different story and a very different line of business that they're pursuing. Um, and then engaging with the team, we're going through a pretty significant expansion. Hatch is a startup company that began with the commissary kitchen last year and has expanded this year to include a packaging facility. And as of the end of the year this year, we'll be including a USDA certified uh, butchery facility. And in the beginning of next year, we'll be adding a logistics arm. Um, it'll be warehousing of finished product. Uh, we're not taking on distribution just yet, but we will be warehousing finished packaged product for our um, for our clients. So my typical day spans <laughs> that whole realm of stuff right now. I did not. Um, I learned everything on the job. I, I know plenty of people who did go to culinary school, and I think it can benefit some people, but you know, there's a ton of value to working in a small kitchen with a small crew and having access to that chef or a manager who has worked their way up or an owner who has worked their way up who can just answer those questions and show you on the spot what they're doing and how to do it. In a perfect world, those back of house and front of house interact seamlessly, and actually that was a standard that we held ourselves to at r &L Hospitality. We didn't want to um, really see that typical front of house, back of house static. Um, so it was just communication, honestly. We uh, put great leaders in place. Most of our team leaders were people who had worked their way up through the industry. A lot of them worked their way up through our companies. Um, so they were people who were really uh, well-versed in 
those particular concepts, um, the people who ran those concepts, the guests of those concepts. So whether front of house or back of house, the people that we put in charge of running the front and back were people who had already invested in those projects and understood them really well. Yeah, you have to come to it knowing what you want. You have to have a solid business plan. That's something that, unfortunately, a lot of food and beverage operators bypass. Um, simply knowing how to do something is not enough. You have to put the time and effort into understanding what it's going to cost you, what you're willing to give to it, and who your customer is, first and foremost. Just because you make an amazing chocolate chip cookie doesn't mean that everybody's going to want it. Um, and that said, you know, that's something that we offer here is access to people who have done it, who have come before you, who have had all of those you know, pitfalls, obstacles, and then successes. So it's just vastly important to understand what you're doing and why and who wants it. Big T's Grill. It was a, uh, it was in Chester. It is no, I think it's like a Rite Aid now. Um, <laughs> it was Big T. Uh, who opened like a hot dog and sandwich shop and uh, I cut my teeth there as the cashier and I also made salads and easy food which was basically whatever needed to be made that there weren't hands to do uh, and actually that job was funny because I worked with a bunch of seasoned waitresses there and learned quite a bit uh, for better or worse from them about <laughs> how to do my job. So Hatch Kitchen is a commissary kitchen and commercial kitchen. Um, we do everything or support everyone from caterers, um, ghost kitchens, meal prep companies, um, consumer packaged goods, and um, they are all processed out of this kitchen. Um, a lot of products you would recognize in your local markets. Um, we can take those operations further to Hatch Packaging, which as of right now is um, an acidified foods co-packing facility. So we're doing sauces predominantly, um, Bloody Mary mix, um, different uh, bottled acidified foods. We will be expanding to do baking packaging next year. Um, if you want to move your company on into the realm of processed meats, we have a USDA butchery facility called Hatch Butchery. Uh, there's a cold side and a hot side, so we can take your animal, take your specs, make the cuts. Uh, you can bring your team in and do it, or um, we can take your animal, make the cuts, make the grinds, and then build your sausage recipe to spec, mass produce it, and it will be USC inspected so that you can sell it to market. A lot of people who work in this industry feel like it's just restaurant, 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 um, and then the end goal is obviously you know to see success as your own operator and open your own restaurant or business. Um, so even though I knew that wasn't the end all be all, seeing Hatch, seeing what they're doing to not necessarily build a business and a brand out of their own products, but to support the food and beverage industry uh, in Richmond and really central Virginia, that just gives me a ton of joy. It's such fun to interact with so many different producers um, and to support the people who are supporting them and to have the opportunity to engage on all these different levels of work on such cool projects. Um, I guess the the employees I had the most interaction with at RNL and here to an extent were managers and the best manager uh, I've ever had was somebody who genuinely cared about the employees and you know the difference between somebody who is invested in the staff and in the business and somebody who understands the business is vast you can teach everything I can teach you how to manage your costs I can teach you how to manage your um, your business and social media I can teach you how to do menu production all of that stuff but I can't teach you how to care and communicate that to other people um, and those managers are always the ones who excel because first and foremost you know the staff understands that they're there for them and that translates to the guest experience and everything else um, so yeah I've, I've been really lucky to actually have several of those managers working underneath me I think hospitality means to me just, you know, taking somebody 
uh, and offering them an experience that makes them feel at home when they're not. Um, and that's, you know, whether it's, you know, a, a restaurant, a catered experience, a hotel, if you feel like you're comfortable and happy where you are and like you're very clear for, I think that's the best kind of hospitality. Advice, I guess, just learn everything you can from the people around you. Um, you know, one thing that I didn't do so much in the beginning, but then quickly started to do as I gained more experience was just start talking to the people who I worked for. And when I started out, chefs were really intimidating. <laughs> so I didn't always feel comfortable doing that. But the more questions I asked, you know, the more they saw that I was invested in the process and that I cared about what was happening. And people are always willing to teach you when you show um, you know, that you really care about how things are done and, and getting the quality to translate because you understand it. Mm -hmm. I just, I think um, our industry is changing a lot right now. Um, I think a lot of that was COVID. COVID pushed it faster. Technology was taking us in a certain direction anyway. So I think it benefits all of us to look at hospitality and that typical model of here you are at a restaurant getting service and really think about how you can expand on that to make hospitality inclusive of many different scenarios um, because that will ultimately sustain our industry. Here at Hatch. Yeah, so Zorge Pizza started here at Hatch um, as a food truck and um, has ultimately exploded into a wildly popular food truck concept and Zorch is opening a brick and mortar in Carytown um, relatively soon. Um, Nightingale was one of the first ever members of Hatch Kitchen. They started out in a corner of the main kitchen um, and have since, as of October 1st, expanded into their own facility in an entirely new built-out warehouse, uh, taking up a third of a 20,000 foot square, square foot warehouse. Um, to do their operation, which has now grown exponentially. They're carried um, at 7-Eleven. They're carried in all the local markets. Um, so they grew from just a relatively small ice cream sandwich shop into a real deal big business. Um, they're two of our greatest success stories.